village of Pinehurst, one of the most iconic golf destinations in all of America, known for Pinehurst Resort, the many quaint inns and restaurants, and of course, the village of Pinehurst itself, where people come, congregate, relax, eat, and socialize. Many people know all about this, but we're going to tell you about the other Pinehurst on this episode of The Traveling Golfer from the Sand Hills and from the village of Pinehurst. One moment changes everything. Distance, precision, decided in a microsecond. So reduce your ball spin and get the most performance at impact with four yards more. A next-gen golf tee proven by pros and players like you. The unique durable design flexes at contact, reducing ball spin, giving you tighter control and more distance. So change your game and get four yards more. Brought to you by Greenkeepers. Golf smart. It's not a big bomber's golf course. You have to play to the areas you have to go to. Uh, greens aren't, aren't, aren't super big, um, and they're fast, um, and they've got some very sneaky slopes in them. Matt Hauser, General Manager, PGA Professional at Talamore Resort and the sister course, Mid-South. Matt, Traveling Golfer has been here a few times, talked to you, watched all the renovation, and now this course is so prime, I was shocked when I played it. It is absolutely a work of art now. Yeah, the past couple of years have been great for the golf course, both this one and Mid-South. Condition-wise, our, our superintendents really have had the, had the time of year to dial it in and get the golf course. Like you said, it's in prime condition. Basic routing is the same, but a lot else has changed. Yeah, I mean the main thing is under the uh, that we we're shooting for with the renovation was obviously to get the greens better. We had bent grass greens; they were old. It was time to go to Bermuda. Uh, that was number one. And then as we went through, we decided uh, it's time to make the course more player friendly, um, better cart access, easier walks to the green, easier walks to the fairways. No more cart path only holes except for the par threes. Took out about 70 sand traps. They were in bad spots. They were in a spot where a bad golfer would get in there. Where it didn't it didn't make the round more enjoyable by being in one of those bunkers. Golf Course Architecture 101. Get out the pencils and paper. Golf Course Design should have a purpose, every bit of it. They took out 70 bunkers at Talamore, make it a little more player friendly. But on this reachable par five, number four, they left a cluster of three bunkers, one big one, two small. That way, those who are gonna try and reach the green and two, the big boys, well, there's going to be a penalty for leaving it to the right a little bit. Then, for those of us who can't quite reach the green and two, we have to be smart enough to stay short of the bunker so we can still make birdie with our wedge. We added 12 sidewall bunkers, uh, the one on number two is uh, seven and a half feet tall. Uh, the two on number nine are humongous, um, but yeah, from a visual aspect, it's great. It just gives the course something that the area doesn't have. Two beautiful, round, spectacle sidewall bunkers in front of number nine. Wonderful to look at, not easy to escape. These villas are spectacular. Yeah, yeah, it is great. We can sleep, we can, uh, we can sleep over 200 people, like you said, within walking distance of the clubhouse. Um, we have two and three bedroom condos. You can sleep four to six, depending on your group. Uh, we have a lot of large groups, foursomes up to groups of 20, groups of 40. Um, we do uh, on-site breakfast every day. We do a pig picking on Mondays and Thursdays for our guests, and all that's complimentary. My favorite hole on the front nine this is the downhill par three. Yeah. That's because it's the only downhill hole. I need the rest by then. <laughs> How about you? Do you have a favorite? Um, 
I like uh, some of the, the, the couple of the side walls. I really like number nine. I just think it has a great look. That green's elevated, um, and just seeing that with the uh, with the two bunkers in front of it. And then I like 14 because of our uh, our residents that live out there. <laughs> I was going to get to that. <laughs> you see them on the logo at Talamore from day one. The llamas. The llamas. Yep. Yeah. It was. Uh, we had llama caddies when we first started. Uh, the couple that we have now are retired. We're looking to uh, add a couple more and, and get them back in. And some of the cooler months, some of the off-peak times, to um, to have them out there. Possibly thinking about adding another llama pen out here for uh, for the new ones. As well. The llamas are originally from Peru, so you have to speak to them in Spanish. Como se llama? I got a million of them. And I asked you about your favorite hole. How about your favorite llama? I know which one mine is. The Dalai Lama <laughs> pig smoker. <laughs> the smoker they use for the pig picking, it's called the Dalai Lama. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that one definitely works very well. I think the bottom line to the whole thing is that with the combination of your sister course, Mid-South, a private Arnold Palmer course, you can still play if you book a golf package with Talamore. because it's their sister course. It's like their little bonus on top of it. And it is a magnificent golf course with one of the best green locations around the lake I've ever seen. Coming in there, nine and 18, and the use of that lake at that particular part and the way the strategy comes into play. I, I love it. So, what a compliment. Yeah, it's great. To, it's, it's definitely great. I mean, that, that Mid South is a fantastic golf course. Combine the two together with our lodging, fantastic place to stay and play. By number 18, you finally realize that almost all of the shots are uphill, especially the pro shots to the green. Talamore plays way longer than the yardage. Even if you had a good drive just past the 150 marker, the best advice, take extra club. Well, maybe not that much club. Introducing HL4. The fourth release in the award-winning Hot Launch series from master club designer David Glaude. The new HL4 Hybrid features a thinner and lighter 17-4 forged steel crown for faster club head and ball speeds. The redesigned cup face is thinner, providing more face flex and greater power. In addition, variable face thickness technology provides more contact points on the face that provide better off-center hit distance, so miss hits fly just like on-center strikes. The low-profile face incorporates high-toe design. A heavier sole weight lowers the CG and raises MOI for the best in feel, launch, and forgiveness. A power channel behind the face moves weight to the back of the club head while also maximizing face flex. Visit an authorized Tour Edge fitter today and experience the best custom-fitted value in golf. Hand-built in the USA. Backed by our lifetime warranty and shipped with our unprecedented 48-hour delivery guarantee on custom fit orders. Hot Launch HL4. Get fit. Spend less. Play better. Mike Sanders and Jack Nicholas Jr. and the, the people that started the golf course and made it, they, they had a, just a beautiful piece of property to work with. Um, lots of rolling hills and tall longleaf pines and, um, and beautiful lakes. We are at Legacy Golf Links with PGA Professional General Manager Chad DeRusso. And Chad, there are not many places in America where you can play a daily fee course with the Nicholas name attached to it. That's right, yeah. Uh, we've got a Jack Nicholas Jr. design golf course here, uh, built in 1991, and I think uh, we, we believe it was one of Jackie's first golf courses that he did on his own in the Nicholas Design Company. The, the back nine actually used to be a catfish farm, so these lakes used to have catfish in them years ago, and, um, uh, but it's beautiful. There's a couple different dams, a couple different levels of lakes, and 
it just goes on and on. So you're saying the catfish have been replaced by golf balls? I think in the so, yeah. There's not, not as many as there used to be, I don't believe. But uh, yeah, the lake features just play a, a, an integral role in the entire experience here on the golf course. So you're kind of around the water most of the day. Gotta love all the Antigua merchandise at Legacy Golf Links, especially the line of patriotic shirts. Standing at 18 green. Yeah. You can see that approach shot. I'm gonna tighten you up a little bit over yeah. the water here. This is really a pretty remarkable exclamation point on the end of this round. But there are a lot of great holes out here. Some of your yeah. favorites? Um, by f definitely the par threes. We've got a great set of uh, four par threes that are all beautiful, very challenging, elevated tees looking down with water and play. Um, the 18th hole here is uh, our signature hole and um, it's a very challenging par five. It's guarded by a rock wall here uh, with a lake in front of it, and it's a, it's a long hole. It's nicknamed the Bear um, for the Nicholas Heritage, and it was actually rated the um, number one finishing hole in Moore County by Pinehurst Magazine. Even if you bust a big drive off the tee, get it past the 150 marker, you're stuck with a downhill lie over water, rocks, a real tightener for the last shot of the day. Go, baby, go! That's why they call it the toughest. Once again, the opportunity for everybody in America to play a Nicholas course is very very rare um, and in this particular case a very affordable Nicholas course yes yeah we, we try to um, our rate structure here is uh, you know in the peak season uh, it's gonna get up around hundred dollars and in the off season in the winter time it's around forty dollars so depending on when you come and how busy it is but it's definitely affordable and accessible for everybody Chad DeRusso general manager PGA professional right here in playground of the Nicholas family. Tell Jackie he did a great job right. on this, Chad. Right. We really enjoy every single visit I've ever made to Legacy Golf Links right here in the other Pinehurst. everywhere you look in the Pinehurst area. Golf courses, golfers, the golfers don't live by golf alone, they gotta eat. And there are plenty of fine dining restaurants throughout the Pinehurst area, but we thought we'd bring you, again, the other Pinehurst from a culinary point of view. Some of the iconic hometown places, like starting your day at Max Anytime Breakfast, busiest spot right on Route 1 in Aberdeen, king size breakfast, and of course, always served with a smile. For lunch, there's a little place called Wedgie's, adjacent to a gas station, owned and operated by PGA professional Joe Gay used to be director of golf at Tobacco Road, opened this place using pre-baked pizza shells. They cut them into wedges, put all of the toppings, put it in an oven, fold it over into a sandwich. It is one of the most popular places in the area, and it's the only place where you can get a full tank of gas, a great sandwich, and a golf lesson all in one spot. And finally, don't miss the Pickin' Pig, right on the runway at Little Carthage Airport. Family favorite. The kids can sit out on the picnic tables, eat dinner, watch the planes take off and land. Inside, comfortable surroundings, the best pulled pork in the area. And on Saturdays, they do ribs. So you better get there early, because when they run out, they're done. The Pickin' Pig is a favorite of the entire area and a real spot to get 
some down home North Carolina cooking. I like to, when I start talking about Mike and some of his work, I like to say he was an artist first before he was a golf course architect. And creativity is imagination and, and kind of historical architecture features uh, in his work. Chris Brown, director of golf at Tobacco Road. One of the wildest places you could ever play golf, not just in the Sand Hills, but maybe in America. A Mike Strantz masterpiece. We're sitting right in front of the rustic clubhouse, a little country music playing in the background, <laughs> the porch, a great place to relax after a round. Chris, this place has been one of the most talked about golf courses ever since it was opened in the 90s. Yeah, 1998, November was uh, our first month of operation and it's, it's, uh, it's been an interesting, been a very pleasurable journey and uh, 20 years <laughs> it's our 20th anniversary believe it or not and uh, and so I'm looking forward to uh, 20 good more Chris I see farm implements all over the place mm -hmm. the guy from Philadelphia doesn't really know these <laughs> but tell me about it yeah, um, is this kind of the theme of Tobacco Road? Uh, all of our, our hole markers are, are um, well, we use plows, you know, the old, you know, horse or mule drawn plows to let people know where they're, you know, what number hole they're on. And then our tee boxes um, are designated by farm implements or that you would use to till the soil. So we have the rippers and the plows and the discs, and they all just tie into the theme of Tobacco Road. Well, you have a lot of different looks or no looks. <laughs> For example, there's some blind shots. Right off the bat, number one tee. Number one. Not 100% blind. There's a little sliver you yeah. can hit, though. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's kind of, you know, Mike once again presenting the golfer, not necessarily a physical challenge, but a, a mental challenge. You know, um, whether or not you can see the entire fairway or, like you say, a little sliver or whatnot, you know, the shot is still the same. Those who are used to vanilla might go into a little cultural shock here. They struggle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to say that Tobacco Road is probably one of the, it's definitely a golf course that provides the most options. Now it's time for our strike a line putt of the day. And if there ever was a golf course in America where the Straka green reading guide could come in handy, it's right here at Tobacco Road. All you think about all day long is please don't three putt. Thanks, Crack a line. Couple bells. Couple bells. You know, and I, I mean, it, it's. Let people know you're out of the area there. Yeah, it's. One for the green, one for a fairway. Well, number 13 is one of the memorable holes where you may only get a peek at the top of the flag. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of one of those, probably one of the most talked about holes out on Tobacco Road. Hit a good drive. Perfect second shot. Chris, now what do I do? All I want to do, or what I want you to do, is hit it just a little left of that, that pine tree right out there. Over there? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir, right there, trust me. Advice from the world's tallest caddy. Notice I didn't say best. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Really? Yeah. We'll see. I trusted my caddy. I hit it exactly where he said. Who knows the result? The anxiety builds. You get up to the green and, as Gomer Pa would say, surprise, surprise. Me personally, I really like our fifth hole. Not very long, um, but the challenges 
from the tee and, and coming into the green. Um, you can drive the green from the tee for the longer hitters. It's one of those holes where Mike demonstrated his difficulty, the difficulty and the subtleness of things. Number five, Chris's favorite hole. Show me the way. Wow, 315 yards, very uphill, into the wind. He just bunted it out, 245. 70 yards to the pin, knock it close. Boy, that may kick a little right, could be close. Could be close. A little 14 footer for birdie, in or out with the pin. I'm old school, I, I like the pin out, so thank you. Yeah! There we go. Old school Chris, birdie on his favorite hole. Three. No trip to the Sand Hills would not be complete without playing Tobacco Road. Absolutely. And when you come, bring your camera or just go home and revisit this episode of The Traveling Golfer from Tobacco Road. Here we go, yeah! Now that's the way to finish a round at Tobacco Road. On number 18, in front of the clubhouse, totally unique birdie putt. The entire trip's been unique. The other Pinehurst. Legacy Golf Links, Talamore Resort, and Tobacco Road. We wanna thank everyone who made this trip possible from the Village of Pinehurst Golf Association, our friends from the Sand Hills of North Carolina. And once again, we head down the road on the Traveling Golfer. We hope you come back and enjoy this very unique other Pinehurst golf destination. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe, courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of The Traveling Golfer. <laughs>